And, uh, and so Seth so will be meeting here uh, prior to town meeting for the next however long this lasts. We have a full agenda tonight, and as is our practice with uh, pre-town meeting select board meetings, we do not do public comment now, so we'll go right to our six o'clock item, which is uh, consideration of approval of the housing production plan. Now we have some folks from the housing and sheltering committee here to talk to us about that. So uh, you guys are fine where you are. These are ambient mics here. Yes, so you could just introduce yourself to folks at home and uh, tell us about the point. So the, the state had two levels of, uh, of adoption of the plan. First, they approved the plan, they started with the plan and approved everything that they look for in the statute, and the second is to certify the plan. And certification implies that the town has met its goal of producing new housing, affordable housing, that is. And when we talk about affordable housing, we're talking about a housing that is affordable for those making up to 80% of area median income and who are spending no more than 30% of their income on their housing. And the goal is to produce up to, to produce half percent of the town's year-round housing stock and affordable housing, which in Amherst's case works out to 48 minutes per year. So the plan, which was completed last month, shows how the town can achieve that. And I believe the board received in their email a copy of a longer presentation, which was conducted by the consultants themselves. So we're going to be using that as an outline today. We're not going to visit all the bullet points in that plan, but we'll go over it and the board can come back to us with questions on specific points. So we've already defined affordable housing under the federal and state guidelines. Uh, so now that's a little bit why the town chose to conduct this study, to produce this plan. Um, in getting a certified plan from the state, the town is granted greater control over how affordable housing is produced in the town. So a uh, fully B developer who came to the town and proposed housing, uh, the zoning board appealed to have greater leverage in dealing with that developer and the developer does not have the recourse of an appeal if they were turned down by the zoning board. That's just one of the reasons that the town decided to take on this plan. Additionally, the town has sought for a long time to have data that shows more accurately the picture of housing in town and provides the town avenues to address uh, various issues with housing in town. So one of the goals, the overriding goal from the town's master plan is to provide a mix of housing that meets the physical needs of and is affordable to the broadest possible spectrum of our community and minimizes the impact on the environment. And that is also one of the overriding goals of the housing production plan. So when we look at what housing is currently affordable in Amherst, of the 9,621 year-round housing units, 1,035 units, or 10.76% are currently counted on the state's subsidized housing inventory. And that gets us to the next point, which is that the town is near a critical threshold where if the town falls below 10% of its housing being on a subsidized housing inventory, um, the town would be subject to uh, 40 new developers being able to propose developments without uh, the town's chance to uh, summarily uh, block those proposals, as they would if the housing production plan is certified. So some examples of people in Amherst who might need affordable housing include children who grew up in Amherst and not raised their families locally, uh, the cashier in the local grocery store earning really more than minimum wage, a uh, school staff and worker and spouse who's a ground worker in UMass with combined earning, combined earnings of less than $55,000 and two children. And then one of the really key findings of the housing production plan, the, the data portion of the plan, was that over the last decade, Amherst has lost about 40% of its population age 26 to 45. And so some of the strategies that the housing production plan outlines address that loss in population. Um, I think I'm going to turn it over to John a little bit. Okay. Um, let me just come back to the point that Greg just made, because it's really very important. Um, the plan shows that there's been a growth in the town population that's significant. Most of that growth is due to added students, principally at the university. Um, but housing has not grown over that period very much. So housing has not kept up with the demand. A lot of the demand is created by students. But because of that demand, the demography of the town has changed. 
Some of that may be due to general population trends, but the fact that that 26 to, or 25 to 44 population has been reduced, that the school population has been reduced, is a result of young families no longer being able to afford housing in Amherst. So when we think about the student problem, we tend to think about behavior problems, and that certainly is one dimension. But there's a second important question that people aren't focused on, which is that students are taking over a lot of the town housing, even if they never are a nuisance in a neighborhood. The fact is that that housing is not available to young families, and that means, as I said, the demography of the town is changing. We don't have the kind of mixed population that we've had historically, and I don't think that's where the town wants to be. So that is among the most important findings. So when we look at priority housing needs, which is on page 12 of the handout, we need more rental ha uh, housing for families. Um, we also need more rental housing for students, because if we don't provide more rental housing, as they have been, where landlords buy up that housing uh, and, and they move in. Uh, there's a lot of existing housing stock, including affordable housing that we want to be sure is preserved and maintained. We want to do things that create affordable uh, home ownership for families. And we also want to be sure that housing is available for special populations who are at risk individuals with disabilities, individuals who are homeless, um, individuals who are extremely low income. So all of that is to continue to preserve a diverse population in the town of Amherst. Uh, the plan includes a table which shows the consultant's estimates of the needs of various population groups. Um, of course, the plan itself doesn't call for meeting all of those needs. In fact, it only calls for meeting a relatively small fraction of it. But we asked them to include that so that we could all get some idea of the dimensions of the unmet need for housing, even knowing that what we're required to do in the plan, um, the 240 additional units, won't nearly approach this need. But that's a problem for the town to consider to look at the ways in which we currently restrict development, and if we want to reverse the trends of the last 20 or so years, we've got to make some changes that will permit that to happen. And so the consultants outlined a number of strategies that the town could pursue the very goals that John just outlined. And one of the committee's main uh, pieces of input on the plan was to really hone those strategies down, because we were given a very comprehensive menu of options which could be pursued over decades, but we really wanted to narrow it down to those that were pursuable in the near future. So in the category of ongoing strategies, these are strategies that the town has already undertaken and should continue to undertake, but which with them don't come any specific number of housing units per year. We have strategies such as to conduct community education related to affordable housing, to continue to pursue town-down partnerships, especially with mass, to ensure effective enforcement of zoning bylaws and town regulations, and then, on top of such ongoing strategies, the committee really made it a point to focus on strategies that we could pursue in the next one to five years. I should point out that the housing production plan is a plan for production over five years. So these strategies are assigned certain years. In the categories of strategies to be pursued, in years one and two, we have to establish and capitalize a municipal affordable housing trust fund, to modify the inclusionary zoning and supplemental apartment bylaws, to continue to rezone village centers using restrictions on infill development, and to continue to make suitable public property available for affordable housing. Those are the strategies for years one and two. For years three through five, we have to monitor and maintain subsidized housing and utility units, and to fund housing rehab efforts. And our committee has already begun to implement some of these in the form of restructuring subcommittees that will be working groups to pursue in particular the strategies of establishing a municipal affordable housing trust fund and modifying the inclusionary zoning bylaw. And as far as next steps with the plan, really the select board is our next step because it is one of the last pieces of approval we need before sending the plan off to the state. And to give a sense of the time frame and the urgency for this approval, um, 
there's a number of affordable housing products uh, projects in the pipeline right now, most significantly Olympia Oaks. And if the town adopts this plan in time, we could conceivably count those units toward this year's goal and therefore receive certification of the plan. So with that, we open it up to any questions if the board might have us. Thank you very much. That was a very comprehensive uh, review and much appreciated. I will point out for folks who are uh, paying attention at home that these documents are in the Select Board's web packet. The, um, the uh, PowerPoint presentation is in this week's packet. The whole big written report is in last week's packet. Um, so, uh, so folks should take a look at that. It, it's really, it's tremendous information. It's very timely. It's exactly what we need now. And thank you very much for that. Um, Select Board, questions or comments? Ms. Burr. I just want to make a couple of quick comments as the liaison to this committee. Uh, one, I'm really appreciative that three of the six members could come tonight. Thank you also, Aaron, for being able to be here. Um, this is a very dedicated, hardworking group. They've been in existence really for less than a year. Um, they had a seventh member who has since had to leave us. And they, as, as Greg mentioned, they are restructuring their subcommittees to actually look at the work they're planning to do, which might seem somewhat self-evident, but isn't always in committee structures. So they're really trying to get things moving along and get things accomplished. And I know that one of the things they did along with the study, too, is they helped the consultant um, explain some of the findings in ways that we as a community could really relate to based on the way our master plan was written and other <coughs> strategies that we've talked about. So it isn't just like we gave her money and she said here and they said okay. Um, there was a lot of interaction as to um, how the information might be presented. I know John worked on different charts, et cetera, with her. One of the things that I'm looking forward to hearing from the Housing and Sheltering Committee in the, sh in the near future is since there's currently another housing study underway, a market study, what they think the community education might look like moving forward. Because we'll have these two big studies that people in town meet in, people throughout town have been really excited about, ooh, we're going to get some, some meat in this housing situation. And, and then how do you, you know, what, what's, the, what's the grab to get people involved in that rather than you know, necessarily a particular town meeting article, although that's obviously coming up as well, but how that might work. So. And I'll just note um, that these studies are related. They were put out to the same consultants as part of the RFP. I don't want anybody to think we've got competing housing no. studies going on. They're kind of they're kind of parts of a um, whole. Right. Yeah. So, um, any comment on what you're expecting from that part, or or the timeline for that, or anything like that? What we're expecting from the additional study? Yeah. Well, our involvement with that study is similar to our involvement with the housing production plan. So I believe we're meeting with the consultants conducting that study in late May, early June. We're going to be co-hosting one of those or more of those meetings with the planning board. If the planning board's involved, and those of course all be public meetings, there will likely be a public forum involved. So we'll keep everyone posted on the progress with that. And it's great to have the additional data. Like you said, they're complementary, they're not competing studies. And although it's great to have more studies in the pipeline, I think there's yet another one that's been proposed. Uh, the town can continue to act now and need not wait on additional data because the housing production plan has provided much of that already. Thank you, that's an excellent point. Other questions or comments for folks from this committee? Yeah. Just very briefly, I, 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 I've got through the, the short presentation and, and most of the, the bigger study, and um, <laughs> it's great. It's, well, it, it's, it's, uh, it's thick. Yeah. I mean, there, there's a lot going on in here, and, and you know, I really appreciate sort of how it pulls together trends and everything else, but really what I wanted to say is that um, it's very elucidating on that part of the market that it really deals with. Um, and it does um, help understand sort of what the heck is going on. Um, uh, but I, I, I do want to say that I'm looking forward to the second half of it because that deals with the other part of the same issue, the, the, part, the, the unsubsidized, the, the not low income. There's a, there's a middle section in your graph here and, and families and professionals and everything else and that's got to be <coughs> fleshed out a little bit too because they live here too. Other questions or comments from the select board? Mr. Wall. In the same vein as the comments by Ms. Brewer and Mr. Hayden, who have been doing my reading. You know, again, it's a wonderful plan. It's very clearly presented both here and tonight, so very grateful. But I really hope that town meeting members will take it to heart, too, because we've been trying to do these things. And, you know, we, we go in circles debating, do we have enough housing or is it the right kind of housing? I think the message coming out of these documents is pretty clear. We don't have enough, and we know what kinds we need, and we know where part of the problem comes from. And so, among the measures here that we're talking about, inclusionary zoning, 
supplemental apartment bylaws, rezoning of village centers, easing restrictions on infill. I think the message there is pretty clear, and I hope it will help to focus the discussion we're about to have in the next two weeks or whenever we finish. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Ms. Stein. I really appreciate the data that was in here. Um, I just find that I respond to uh, that kind of information. I had no idea that certain of the properties in town uh, were not permanently affordable. That was a surprise. I knew of some, but uh, there are a few on there I didn't know about. So it really did bring a lot of data um, in a very meaningful way to us. And I appreciate that a lot. It's hard work, but thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Um, I would just again appreciate the, the, the much larger context that you've given us for kind of decision making and considerations of the kinds of issues that come before us, come before the planning board, come before the zoning board of appeals, come before town meeting all the time. Um, it really kind of suggests a, a cause and effect relationship over a long period of time that kind of makes us say, oh, okay, so here we are, you know. Um, and, uh, and I think that that's incredibly valuable. I know that this report was extremely well received at planning board last <coughs> week. Um, they are clearly in the thick of these issues also. Um, and this is very valuable for all of us to have. So at this point, as you said in the beginning, and there's a cover memo in our uh, packets about this, you need the select board to vote to approve this plan. To adopt. To adopt, thank you. Um, along with the planning board, which already did this last week, so that you can send it to the state so that we can get There is a final presentation that I believe was the town manager, and he would then send that out, but yes. OK. You'll do that, right? <laughs> Please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> OK. Uh, Ms. Stein, would you like to make the sure. motion? Sure. I move that the select board adopt the town of Amherst housing production plan dated March 2013. Second. So further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 And that is unanimous. Thank you very much. Really Thank looking you forward to your report to town meeting tonight, and uh, yeah. you've given us tremendous information. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for your great work on this committee. As um, Ms. Brewer noted, this is a new committee. This was, it was fairly contentious, our creation of this committee, and uh, you're doing incredibly good work. So thank you. Thanks. Much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So it is now. 621. We've got a few more things we've got to deal with tonight. Um, let us deal, start with the untimed items. So <coughs> make sure we get those out of the way. Uh, Parking. Yeah, community fair and then cultural survival bazaar, and then we'll have Mr. Musanti speak to the Unitarian Universalist. Sure. Sure. I move that the select board approve the closure of that section of Spring Street within the Spring Street parking lot from 2 p.m. Friday, May 24th. 2013 to 12 a.m. Saturday, May 25th, 2013, and again on Saturday, May 25th, 2013, from 1.30 p.m., following the closure of the farmer's market, to 12 a.m. Sunday, May 26th, on behalf of the Rot Rotary Club of Amherst for the community fair. Four got left out. Oh. Yeah. Second. With the, the discussion. Four. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Okay. I move that the select board approve the reservation of 21 metered parking spaces on the westerly side of Boltwood Avenue, originating at College Street, moving north towards Spring Street, AM, 8 a.m., Monday, May 20th, 2013, through 12 a.m., Sunday, May 26, 2013 and the three metered parking spaces on the easterly side of South Pleasant Street, south of the taxi stand from 8 a.m. to 12 a.m. on Thursday, May 23, 2013, Friday, May 24, 2013, and Saturday, May 26. That can't be right. <coughs> It's got to be May 25th, doesn't it? 25th. Yeah, 25th. The other days are right. Yeah, okay. 25th. Okay. Um, on behalf yeah. of the Rotary Club of Amherst for the Community Fair. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. All right. I move that the select board approve the reservation of 10 meters parking spaces <coughs> on the west side of Boltwood Avenue originating at Spring Street 
intersection moving south towards College Street for vendor use for the Cultural Survival's 8th Annual Bazaar on the South Common from 5 a.m. Friday, May 31st, 2013 through 9 p.m. Sunday, June 2nd, 2013. Second. So the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. So then the next one is the Unitarian Universalist Society of America. Instead of Amherst in America. Amherst. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, we're getting big it's an here. Inspirational group. That's right. So uh, this <laughs> was a uh, right. This was a request that was coming to us, um, but the, there have been new discussions about this, and Mr. Musanti is going to. Yeah, I've got some really good news. So there's no action needed tonight or, or by the select board. Um, had an excellent meeting with the Amherst. Uh, Downtown Business Improvement District and brainstormed some options that would be alternatives to meet the needs of the construction work at the Unitarian uh, uh, Church, um, but not but not require the the uh, reservation of up to six public parking spaces throughout the period of construction. And it was a good discussion and uh, a. Uh, uh, Property owner in the downtown, Andy Jones, uh, has some private parking spaces available for lease uh, a little further up Kellogg Avenue. Uh, had some follow-up discussions with uh, representatives of Wright Builders, who are the contractor for this project, and they are very receptive to pursuing a uh, uh, an arrangement with Andy Jones to reserve the private spaces, which precludes the need uh, for the use of public spaces, so those public spaces on North Pleasant and uh, uh, in the Boltwood parking lot will remain available for the public's use uh, during the construction. So there's a private solution to this uh, need and uh, happy to report that. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking this to the bid for them to discuss and make a recommendation on. I think this is a really good solution. Um, this is going to be a, a, a six-month or more construction right. period, so to not have all of that uh, construction parking taking up the public parking downtown during that period is huge. So uh, that, that's an excellent development. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Questions or comments about that for Mr. Musanti? All right, Ms. Stein, how about special licenses? Sure. I move that the select board approve a special wine and malt license on behalf of Top of the Campus Incorporated for a reception slash brunch to be held May 11, 2013 from 10.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the Herder Art Gallery on the UMass Amherst Campus, Judy Bardwell Clerk. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. It's okay. I'm sorry. I'm confused. Did we do the cultural survival part? Yes. yes, we did. Okay, because I remember the two from Rotary. That's <coughs> Did we? Yeah, I don't we remember. Yes we, yes, we did. We did yeah, two. We did. Because did I think three. because it was. Yes, we did. I'm yes, sure we did. Wording, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I noticed sure the wording. Yeah, it was a great too. idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I, yep. I remember We're good. because they they asked for bags and we gave them spots. What? That was. I'm sorry. I'm confused. I'm sorry. Did perhaps we did this before I got here? Because I, we did not just have a discussion about this. Would you like me to replay my? Yeah, I would. Really, exactly. Because <laughs> I remember, I remember yeah. being struck by the wording when it's, it said the vendors used for the cultural survival's eighth annual right. bazaar. Okay, so I remember you mentioning that. Yeah. And I I'm was sorry. checking the date because I had the previous <laughs> one. Right. So clearly I didn't vote, but I'm sure it's a great idea. The re and, and I'm very sorry for the confusion here. Um, trying to keep track of these different things. But I thought we were still talking about the errors in the in the community fairs uh, motion, which also had the wrong days Thanks, of the week. Yeah. Anyway, well, this one didn't. Um, but I was checking. My concern it. is following up on the conversation we had about the last big event on the common that wasn't the community fair, mm. is because we haven't had time to put into the application for the common stronger wording associated with parking on the common. I do not want, especially because this is a more international festival, people to feel that they're treated differently than people were treated who might have shown up at the extravaganza and saw the vehicles all over the common. And so I would just like that when this is shared, when the approval is shared with yeah. the cultural bazaar organizers, that it's made clear. I don't know if we normally give them a written decision on parking. I doubt it. I know we do on the common, but I'm assuming we don't on the parking. That says, 
kind of contrary to what you might have noticed just a couple of weeks ago, we are happy to let you drive a few limited vehicles on and off the common and drop off and pick up, but do not do it because we will enforce. What I'm saying is we can't just let the last time continue on because people saw it happen. And they might very fairly assume that it's okay now, so, and it's not. Mr. Yeah, there will be a gentle reminder to the applicant of what the do's and don'ts are. That would be yep. great. All right, so we're still at special licenses. Right. Um, let me just mention before you do this one that, yes, true enough, the date was May 1st, which was the other day. This is one of those licenses that just sort of slipped through the cracks of our approval process. It was actually received in time and everything. It just, um, things are a little shorthanded in the uh, select board office right now, so this didn't happen. Um, Mr. Musanti and I um, talked about it and decided that this is something that the select board would have approved had it come before us last week, and so we pre-approved it so that we could make it official this week, and I hope you don't mind terribly that we did that. So, I'm about to suffer. Ms. Stein. <laughs> I move that the select board approve a special wine and malt license on behalf of Portobello Fine Foods for a chamber event on May 1st, 2013, from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Eric Carl Museum, Amherst, Christine Ellison, contact. Second. Further discussion. Mr. Hayden. Do we know that it went well and we should approve it? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> We're very approvable in okay. retrospect. Yes. <laughs> Further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 That is unanimous. <clears throat> All right. Other things to talk about before we get to town meeting. Um, the altered layout. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, so we have received this is not in our this is not in our agenda so probably um not reasonably anticipated um so there is this process we've been dealing with this atkins stuff well forever obviously and uh and we dealt with it a couple of meetings ago we had to there are all these verbs specific verbs that are involved in every every step i think the last meeting was our intent to lay out yes. something then the planning board had to um approve our intention or something like that and um now the select board has to adopt the layout this is also something we've talked about in relation to the town meeting warrant articles tonight it turns out that it's our vote tonight, this adoption vote, that then starts a clock whereby after adopted, the plans for the altered layout need to be uh, on file with the town clerk's office for eight days prior to the town meeting vote. So the town meeting vote needs to be postponed until next Wednesday, and we need to vote on this now so that we can start that eight-day clock. So, so that's information about what we're doing, and it's um, uh, information about a procedural motion that I'll make tonight to explain to the body about why we're putting off those articles. So are there questions or comments about that? Nope. Ms. Stein. Yeah. So it's the one on this motion sheet, right? Yes. Okay. I move at the select board pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 82, Sections 21 to 24, having deemed that common convenience and necessity require the alteration of the layouts as public ways of portions of Bay Road, West Bay Road, and West Street, hereby alters the layouts of said roadways as public ways as shown on the plan referenced below and the boundaries of Bay Road, West Bay Road, and West Street as public ways are hereby altered to include within said layouts the parcels of land shown on a plan of land entitled, quote, plan of land in the town of Amherst, Hampshire County, Bay Road, West Bay Road, and West Street altered and laid out by the town of Amherst, end quote, dated December 2011. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, the other thing that we have to do is note that we have received from the regional schools notice of the fact that they intend to borrow. And so we just got this from them the other day. There's no action required from us except the announcement that we have received that notice and I have to sign something saying that we received notice so duly announced and 
noticed. Questions or comments about that, Ms. Brewer? Um, for future reference, it would have been interesting, perhaps, to know why one person on the school committee voted against it, which is what it indicates in the cover memo. But given that it was a clear majority vote, I'm not concerned. Okay. Ms. Santi, do you know anything about this? Uh, not about the particulars of that member's concern, but the regional school district planning on capital needs and and borrowing are factored into the multi-year capital planning that the town does. And so I know uh, the superintendent and staff have worked with Sandy and I uh, in terms of the timing of both the amounts and the timing of the borrowing so that as older debt is retired, they're replacing it with new new debt for uh, newer projects. So it, so it works within the overall capital budget. All right, duly noted. Um, I think those are all the specific things that we have motions on and need to take specific actions on. I want to note for the select board's uh, information a couple things that will happen at town meeting from a procedural perspective. Tonight I will recommend uh, or ask the body to approve moving article 26, which is the town gown uh, planning article to 705 on the 15th. That is when the chancellor is available to come and speak to town meeting. I will move to consider article 29 rental regulations on Monday the 20th. And that was the date agreed on by the Safe and Healthy Neighborhoods Working Group that met last week to talk about this. The petitioners will then move consideration of article 38, their um, article for the 22nd, and they will speak to that. Um, so that you know, I've had very good discussions with that neighborhood group. They're all enthusiastically supporting Article 29 and basically are hoping to dismiss Article 38. So that's just kind of the, the bottom line with that. They're going to have a handout. I'm not sure if it'll be tonight at, or at um, the next town meeting um, about their position on that. Uh, and then the other thing is, oh, articles. 10 and 11, is that what it is? Right. Um, the, about the Atkins layout, the, the easements, that we can't consider those tonight and that we would consider those on the 15th, which is af uh, with, after that eight days requirement has been met and we would do that after um, Article 26. Yes. That is all I know about right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> does anybody have any other town meeting related issues we should talk about? Ms. Brewer? Is the petition article associated with human services being moved up? Do we know that for sure? Or are we taking a lead on that? Or? I can't remember what's happening with that article um, 45, if the finance committee is moving that up. We had some discussion of, of select board perhaps offering a motion the night article 25 is about to be considered ah, to consider 45 right. immediately following. Okay. okay. So whenever it comes up. Right. All right, so it won't be tonight. So we'll, we'll the draft coordinate script better on that. Has that. It does. Okay. Uh, Do you know if the petitioner's been contacted about that? Um, I believe so. Okay, so we will uh, we'll follow up on that. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Anything else logistics-wise folks can think of related to We're not going to meet on Wednesday, I hope. That's correct. We have nothing on our agenda for <coughs> Wednesday. Um, next Monday, we will, next Monday is the 13th, is when we expect to take up uh, Article 42. Is that the number again? At the yes. Echo Village article after Housing and Sheltering Committee will have met on Wednesday. And right. um, Mr. Musanti and Mr. Zomek are having continuing conversations with folks about what right. what comes next with that so we will have more information for that next Monday if that is the plan Ms. Brewer will the housing and sheltering committee have in hand a memo indicating what town meeting acceptance uh, yeah, town meeting votes in the affirmative on either of those two articles that go hill or uh, what it actually compels us to do the conversation right yes. about yeah 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 so we'll they'll have, have that in place for, for Wednesday. their discussion on, on Wednesday yeah. good thank you Okay, so that's next week. So we don't need to meet Wednesday. Um, the plan is, as we have done in the past, um, at the end, when we finish whatever article we finish uh, tonight, as the select board has endorsed previously, I'm going to move to consider the next article. And uh, the moderator will ask the body if they want to, if anybody wants to speak for or against considering the next article. And that if they don't, then I will then make the adjournment motion. Uh, and 
So yeah. I think that's everything. So we're about to start a 45 article warrant. Mm -hmm. uh, this okay. is the beginning of a new moderator. And uh, this is going to be a very interesting uh, and important annual town meeting. So uh, get ready. And uh, without objection, this meeting adjourns at 638. Select board will meet again next Monday, the 13th.